Hello, Sarah Gale and Chad here with Hope Relentless Marriage, and we hope that you are doing fantastic. We're so excited that you're joining us today, as always, because you making an investment in your relationship is literally changing the world. How are we changing the world, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're changing the world because marriages impact families, families impact communities, and communities impact the world. We truly believe this. So you are doing your part to impact the world. And today we're excited to be talking about blueprints versus circumstances. So at Hope Relentless, when we work with couples, part of what we enjoy and part of our job is to help simplify and clarify for couples what they can focus on. Life can get busy. We can have tons of roles, responsibilities, distractions, emotions. And so today, what we want to talk about is the blueprint for a healthy marriage. Babe, when you're working with couples, what are some of the primary blueprints, the plans, the ingredients? What are the common things in a growing and healthy relationship? I would say definitely, definitely intentionality. And intentionality can almost be seen as an umbrella because when we're intentional, we can be intentional about many aspects of marriage. And so under the intentionality would be connection. And I think we have to add in their fun. Yeah. Because who wants to just go day in and day out, just going through the motions. And then also we need to add in their communication. That's a, that's a big one. So I think those are some of the, the, the top ones. Those are what couples reach out for. Those are what we help instill. And there's some other ingredients as well. But I think once we start to look at those ingredients, then we're, we're on the right track. Yeah, I love this idea of intentionality. You know, you think about when a relationship starts in that dating phase, likely one or both people were intentional. That's how mm -hmm. essentially it went from strangers to acquaintances, maybe to dating or whatever the current trend talking to, whatever the, uh, the, the, up, the hipster trend for talking to somebody that you are attracted to is, uh, to eventually like maybe engaged and married, there was a level of intentionality. Um, so let's within this, because what we're kind of looking at is the blueprint versus the circumstances. In your experience, what are some areas where the circumstances change and as a result, the intentionality changes? But but when you really look at it, the circumstances aren't the problem. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I just want to add in there because I know for us, it, and not everyone is on the call is is like us in this regard, but our faith would definitely be part of our blueprint blueprint for our marriage. And you know, if anything, that's a lot stems from that for us. And so, when it comes to circumstances that can can impact those those blueprints or those things that can help us to have that fulfilling relationship, when it comes to our faith how we even look at these circumstances is really impacted because we're looking at them through a lens of does this glorify God? Does this honor God? And so I wanted to put that out there for us, but as far as for just holistically speaking, the other listeners that may be listening, I did want to um, also touch on some, some things that I think everyone can identify with, whether you're Christian or not. And one of those is change of seasons. You know, when we have children, that's a huge circumstantial change. And you go from just the two of you, and then all of a sudden you have this needy person staring up at you, and you have to tend to that person. And so it can, it can cause us to really take our eyes off of some of those foundational elements that are part of that blueprint for the marriage. So we stop connecting like we were before because we don't have time or we're tired, we're sleeping. So we don't make time for each other. And even though the season feels like it calls for that, it doesn't change the fact that that time is part of the, the blueprint, the blueprint, part of that connection. And so the marriage will struggle in that regard, in that area. It's kind of like what you sow, you reap. If you're not sowing connection, you're not going to feel connected. Yeah, I, I love that. I can't get over the kids, AKA to Sarah Gale, needy people. <laughs> They're really cute, but they are very needy. Very needy. 
when we but keep yeah, them alive. I mean, we have to keep them alive. When they're yeah. so little, remember, we're just like, we just got to, we need to keep them alive. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, you know, constant, constant needs for different things. Um, and, and I think that's a classic example where the circumstances change, right? And, and realistically, oftentimes as our relationship matures, as we spend more time together, we both pick up likely more responsibilities. That mm -hmm. could be increased workload in our career. That could be kids are added to the picture. Uh, it could be, you know, good things, maybe getting a larger house or getting a promotion or some of these things that we're moving towards as a couple. But at the same time, they become additional things that we have to manage. The circumstances change and become more challenging. But I guess kind of the work that we do with couples is kind of pulling back the curtain and simplifying. It doesn't change the reality that a level of intentionality is probably what existed to help the relationship grow to begin with. And intentionality is the same ingredient. It's the same blueprint that is needed regardless of the circumstances, kids or no kids, promotion or no promotion, new house, not a new house. Intentionality is the area of focus to continue to grow and stimulate the relationship. Correct? Right. I agree with that. And I think that a lot of times we mystify it. You know, we're going through a certain season of life and because we're so in it, 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 it's like, it becomes cloudy is like kind of the vision that I'm seeing. It's just kind of cloudy. We're very reactive and it, we kind of fall into whatever our relationship would be. And so I think that's what you're talking about, Chad, that intentionality that is needed. And I think even more so when you're going into these seasons, when there's adjustment coming, that's when we recommend you get help. You reach out to a counselor, you learn from a resource because those are the most vulnerable times where uh, we will, our, our likelihood is to take away from the marriage because for whatever reason, a lot of us, I mean, Chad and I do it too. It's like, oh, they're going to be there. They're going to be there. Yeah. And there's other things that are more pressing that we, we shift our attention to when in reality, this is tried and true. There are research-based things that help a marriage to flourish. And as far as the research I've read, it doesn't say, but when you're having a hard time in life, the marriage doesn't need any of those things. Yeah. I think that's where grace is required. Sure. Because sometimes we just don't have it. Like sometimes it's life is hard and we have to give ourselves, we have to give each other grace, but it does not change the reality, the real time reality that if we're going to grow a relationship, we have to give the relationship what it needs. Yeah. And, and I think that area of intentionality can serve as a guide for specific skills. Because I think within relationships, there are trends or patterns or characteristics of healthy relationships. And I would say one of those is communication. Communication mm -hmm. is probably one of the biggest things that people reach out to marriage or relationship counseling for. Their communication is a hot mess. It's not working and they need some help with it. And so that is what did you say? What, what did you say? <laughs> it's a hot mess. Just like this, just like this podcast, a hot I had to. It mess. was hanging there. I had to. Couldn't resist. You can tell that we thrive in the area of maturity. But so communication mm -hmm. is one of those things that I think is a fundamental ingredient or a fundamental blueprint to a healthy relationship is communication. And I would say the circumstances around communication are challenging, but it doesn't change the reality that for our relationship to thrive, we need to learn how to communicate together. And yeah. circumstances that can make that more challenging can be our family of origin. Maybe we grew up in a family where yelling and toxicity and aggression were the patterns of communication. Maybe we grew up in a home where uh, people shut down, completely avoided conflict and swept things under the rug. These could be the different circumstances around communication. But at the end of the day, it doesn't change that to have a thriving marriage, 
communication is a primary skill for us to grow in. And when we learn how to communicate, it can fundamentally change the atmosphere and the environment in our relationships. Yeah. And I would segue into connection. I think they, they inter intertwine, they all go together because if you're not communicating with one another, you're not connecting, you're not put positioning yourself. And if you're not intentional, you're not communicating or connecting. And so one of the things I think about in our own marriage is especially early on, we just used to miss each other all the time when it come, when it came to communication, part of it, we had different styles and I would get my feelings hurt and then I would shut down and it just was a mess. And so that impacted our connection because rather than me sharing my heart and opening up, I told myself, he's not going to listen or this isn't going to go well anyway. And so I just held it in. And like I said, that impacted our connection. So I think that that could even be a circumstance where your communication is not going well. And so the circumstance you find yourself in is that you don't feel connected. And you also don't feel like you can communicate. And so it's one of those things where it still does not change the blueprint. And so if anything, it tells us that we're going to need to get help in this area because the longer we exist outside of the blueprint for a healthy marriage is the harder it's going to be to get back to that place. And the more uphill climb we'll, you know, we'll have to do. So. I think that that's, that's significant to see that they are intertwined and that sometimes the circumstance isn't an, an actual big circumstance, but it's just the reality of where you are in your relationship. Yeah. And I think both connection and communication, you know, this isn't actually an ingredient or a, a part of the blueprint that we talked about before, but it, it reminds me of for a relationship to work selfishness can't exist right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so i think communication and connection both have the potential to highlight where selfishness might be thriving yeah. because oftentimes you talked about we miss each other because of communication differences right well mm -hmm. if we're both selfish and we're both just like putting our flag in the ground and saying, this is how I communicate, you change, mm -hmm. right? And you do the same thing. The reality is that selfishness is going to prevent us from ever finding a communication um, that allows us to actually build that connection. You know, mm -hmm. or if I'm saying, well, these are the things I like to do. You want to connect with me? Come over here. Let's watch some yeah. football. Let's go for a hike. Let's go jump in water. And you're like, I don't like any of those things. And so mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, this, this idea of contributing to the relationship and this awareness that it's not always all about me is kind of a key perspective to helping relationships thrive. And when there are differences, um, helping to build bridges. I mean, what are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think selfishness, pride, that's, it all comes into play. And so I like when you say build bridges because it does take the focus off what we want. Honestly, I was thinking about our marriage mentors, Phil and Vicki Wright, and something they said, I think yesterday <laughs> when we were meeting with them and it was talking about, are we focused so much on being understood that we, we forget that we're working as a team to solve the issue? You know, and I was thinking about that because I, I talk a lot about understanding, being understood, all that stuff, validating all that. But it was interesting because I was almost thinking, you know, if we could just kind of take ourselves out of the equation and see our spouse for the resource they are and look at an issue together on the same side of the table, on the same team, and recognize that we're going to use our skills and abilities together to then just address whatever needs to be addressed rather than getting hung up on you didn't hear what I said. You didn't understand me exactly how I needed to be understood rather than getting hung up on that. Like how much more efficient would we <laughs> actually be? It's interesting. Yeah. It's almost this element of when we work together 
on the solution instead of getting stuck on the problem, right? If our communication becomes solution focused instead of problem focused, it kind of changes the interaction, right? That's, yeah. that's kind of what I was thinking about in terms of like building bridges is, okay, how do I, what, what are we working towards together? And that can change the communication and the connection. So it's like, if the goal is for us to feel connected, it's not just about how I, what I like to do. It's what do we like to do? How do we find space yeah. for both of us to exist? If the solution is we need, we want to communicate, we recognize healthy relationships can communicate both in difficult conversations and in moments of celebration. Like, well, what is the solution? Well, likely uh, part of that is going to be increased listening, right? Part of that's mm -hmm. likely to be curiosity, uh, likely, you know, so I, I think that's, that's an interesting dynamic. You know, I'm thankful for Phil and Vicky and just the perspective that they bring to help us individually but also we see that kind of play out um in couples that we work and and their communication as well yeah and so i think and we've talked about this before the how you know how you go about conversation is significant and that kind of can feed into how connected you feel with one another but you know your tone how you're treating each other and we've also talked about gottman's perpetual problems how not everything has a solution not everything is to be solved but i think what we're saying is just when we can take ourselves out of the equation and what we want and how we want it and come together to work on something, then that is going to be the most effective use of our time and even our talents and abilities together. So uh, the last ingredient I'll say that I want to talk about, and like I said, it's not, we, we haven't covered all the ingredients, but I think these are some of the main ones is fun, fun. Yeah. We need fun to be in there because without fun, we're just going through the motions day to day. Like we can feel connected, but like you feel connected to some of your friends, you know, like, and so I guess with that fun, I think of all of it, like passionate fun, you know, I think of uh, adventure, dreams, building, like all of it, just that excitement. Yeah. I mean, I, I think one of the things that we do when we're counseling couples is we end with appreciation um, or we end with different prompts. Like we ask a question and they fill in the gap to, to maybe remember an experience or to celebrate their spouse. Mm -hmm. But I think of one of them is uh, my favorite memory of us is, and oftentimes what's shared there is an experience where they both had fun. So to me, it, it highlights the importance of fun and enjoyment mm -hmm. in our relationships, because those are what create the memories. You know, those are what realistically, when we're having fun and we're enjoying ourselves and we're enjoying the people we're with, we want to repeat that. We want to re reproduce that. And so it's so important to involve fun and enjoyment into our relationships. And once again, as circumstances and seasons change, the reality is don't throw out the fun. It might just mean we need to be more intentional in planning and creating spaces where we can enjoy time together. Yeah. Yeah. So anything else to add when it, when it comes to this, as far as the blue blueprints, that's kind of a tongue twister and circumstances, Chad. No. All right. Well, I guess some of the action steps I would say that we would encourage you to do would be to think about the blue the blueprints that we shared when it comes to marriage. And like I said, it was it's not all exclusive to to what we shared, but those are some of the the things that you can start with and think about where do you need to grow in in those areas. And then also just the idea of circumstances. Do you let circumstances impact what you're doing when it comes to the blueprint. And if so, we want to encourage you to really stick to the blueprint because especially when circumstances are heightened and, and, and we're inclined to let go of the things that we know nourish a marriage, that's when we need to focus all the more because that's when we're going to need that support from our spouse and that connection. And it's just another thing that's, that's, that we have to deal with if we are letting our marriage just fall by the wayside in the midst of those circumstances. So I want to encourage you to do that. 
And do you have any other action steps before I go into our appreciation time? Nope. Okay. So appreciation time, we do this at the end of our podcast, just like Chad said, our couples do at the end of the sessions. And one thing when you were talking about fun, Chad, I was like getting so excited because I was thinking of so many instances where I've just really enjoyed just time with you, whether it's going to Australia together or something more local, like going salt river rafting, which you'd never think I would like that. But I'm going to speak on that. Just one of my favorite times recently with you is just going salt river rafting and being on the tube and we're like interlocking legs and just seeing the wild horses on the side of the, of the river and just enjoying like some chips, just being there together and experiencing something and seeing the contentment on your face was just something that I loved. So that's a fond current or recent memory. One of my, I guess if we're sharing memory instead of appreciation. Oh yeah. I switch it up. Sometimes. Yeah. You just throw curveballs <laughs> in the middle of stuff. I appreciate that you are not easy to pin down. You are throwing <laughs> curveballs all the time. No, yep, I think one yep. of my recent memories that I enjoyed was we did this themed date night where in the month yeah. of July, we tried yeah. different, uh, we both love Mexican food. And so we went mm -hmm. to, I think it's like four or five different Mexican restaurants here locally and just tried different tacos or nachos or margaritas. Um, and so I just enjoyed that adventure of taking something that we love but doing it together, but also kind of changing it up and trying different places. Um, that is recently a fond memory of us just enjoying time together. Yeah. Yeah. I love that as well. All right. Well, we're going to end here and I want to leave you with encouragement that I always leave you with. And it's that no matter where you are in your marriage, if you're in a high place or low, low place, that uh, just want you to be encouraged if you are in a lower place that there's always, always hope. 